fuck on, my dudes. <laughs> you guys are so nice to me. Um, okay, so this song is one that I actually wrote with my good friend Denny Leonard right here. Uh, and he and I have been writing a lot of songs together. Um, and we brought in Ellie Holcomb on the song. Do you know who Ellie Holcomb is? Yeah. Well, I look up to her so much. I, I may have like peed my pants a little bit when she walked in the room. I was like, oh, oh my goodness, you on face. my couch. I didn't pee on your couch. Okay. I did not. No, no. Oh hey. gosh. Oh, you. Um, it's like a weird turn, man. Hey, you, you just kept it going. Okay, let's get back on track. Um, well, I, I wrote this song with um, with them, and it's one that I just feel so just proud of um, because this song is me just kind of talking through um, why I believe in God. Um, and just how he's shown up in every single moment. There's not been a single moment that I, I didn't see God come through. And um, he's been so kind to me. And I feel like this is, this is the song explaining how kind and merciful our God is um, to us. So let's do it. This is why I believe. Glory to God. Thank you for saying that. Write that song. Yeah. And Taylor, we, we were just talking about. Damn, I want you to tell these. We were talking about how much we love y'all. And honestly, these guys, they toured with us in the spring. They both got so big and just so so famous and wrote so many songs that they could have gone and toured with anybody else, but they said they wanted to come back with us. And um, Katie has 
Katie right now has the number one song on Christian radio. Hold on. This show with David. Hey, 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 hey. We. We. We have the number one song. They wrote it together. This guy right here. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. It's incredible. And uh, actually, I'm going to commandeer the hosting uh, responsibility from you, Dave. And I'm going to decide we're going to go second. Um, and it is because I, too, am a huge David Leonard fan. And so I would just like for my work to be done so I can watch David sing as well. So, um, if you will, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a short story. No story time, Colin. Just I'm going to tell it to you straight up. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine who grew up differently than I did. Grew up with the same God-shaped hole in her heart that we all have. But in an effort to fill that void, she found the bottom of a bottle of alcohol for the first time. Only that bottle led to another and another and another. And at just 12 years old, she could already tell that this is something that was no longer under her control. Years went by and the life went on, and the void stayed a void. Until that old bottle of alcohol eventually had my friend in the back of an ambulance fighting for her life. And she survived, and she recovered. And one day as she drove down the road, she finally called out to a God she never understood in the only way she could think to. She took the steering wheel with two hands and looked into the sky. She said, God, if you're real, I need you. And I'm thankful to be in this room tonight singing songs about the kind of God that answers that kind of prayer. The one true living God, the God who said, I'll leave the 99 and I'll find this one. And he found it right there in the driver's seat of that car. <laughs> Saved her life. And in exchange, she gave it to me. That was July 16th, 2018. She gave her life to the Lord, and I'll never forget that day. Because you see, my friend's name now is Emily Kane. She's my wife. And this year, she celebrates five years of sobriety. So if you don't know, and you need any more proof that our God is still in the redemption business, let me, let me and mine be the proof for you tonight. That's her story. This is her song. I was drowned with the windows down, music loud, lost as anyone could be.
song and tell that story. I have an addendum actually to that story. Because that song came out in July. And my father-in-law, while holding my daughter, watched the video. And two weeks later he called me. And we prayed for him to receive Jesus too. I'm sure thankful that I got a happy ending to my story. And I want to glorify the Lord for it. But here's what I believe about testimony. Testimony goes into the ground like a seed. And that Holy Spirit that he promised that would be here tonight because we gather. He's ready to water that seed and grow a lot more stories just like mine tonight. Because maybe you're in the driver's seat of your own life and you're ready for somebody to come in and take over. Maybe somebody you love. But I've got good news. The thing that made the difference for my Emily is the thing that'll make the difference now. Because it wasn't the car she was in, or where she was headed, or Lord, the song on the radio. The thing that made the difference then was the matchless, perfect blood of Jesus shed on the hill of Calvary for the sin of the world. And it still can wash as white as snow tonight. And I wonder. If you'd add your voice with me one time as we sing about that blood of Jesus together, maybe grow some more testimony tonight. cool song about someone overcoming the clutches of addiction? Not lately. Well, <laughs> now I am, it really is beyond words that David would even come out on this tour. He has written so many songs that you guys know, you just didn't know that he wrote them. Yep. Like for instance, this year, mm -hmm. he co-wrote with Katie, Just Hold On, which is the number one song. Then we've got, um, Then Christ Came, Then Christ Came, Changing Everything, wrote it. <laughs> you know him as a new artist, but what you don't know is that he, he's actually not rich. Do you want to... <laughs> We're going to put some of David's tax documents here on the screen. Do you want to... <laughs> like, do you want to tell him something about a shoe collection earlier? Um, I don't know if I agree. Do you want to discuss... My money? finances? <laughs> oh, okay. a big night for you guys. David and the writer of I Can Only Imagine on the same stage. <laughs> Sorry, uh, 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 what I meant out of that is that you write songs. <laughs> take it away. Take it away, dude. Yeah, take it. <laughs> How are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I uh, have written songs. Some of them have worked, some of them, a lot of them have not. Yeah. And uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm thankful to be doing this. I, I've been in Nashville for 18 years now, which is kind of crazy to think about. And uh, been a part of a lot of different bands. Uh, moved out to town, had a band, and then started playing keys in this little rock band called Need to Breathe. Uh, you've heard of them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Still hoping they get the big break. Sure. They know what <laughs> And then uh, during that time, me and a friend of mine, we started writing songs for our little church in Franklin, Tennessee. Ended up starting a band called All Sons and Daughters. And, uh, oh, awesome. and uh, yeah, we never thought that anybody was going to sing those songs outside of our four walls. And then all of a sudden they started. Uh, like I said, I, I, I've spent a lifetime writing songs that, that nobody cares about. And so when you write a song that people care about, you tend to hold it closely and intend to cherish it dearly. So um, we're already in this beautiful spirit of worship. We might as well continue that on, huh? Yeah. I heard your voices, you know what you're doing. Let's sing this together. You give light, you are love, you bring light to the dark.
Yeah. Hey.